and how he falls in love. We use the backdrop of John's and Holland's wedding, um, but she's killed four months into their wedding into their marriage. And so that just sends him for a loop as it would send anybody. He's finally found the love of his life. This is great. You know, I have somebody to partner with me in this King calling that I have on my life that I'm stuck with. And now she's gone. And he, he kind of is a little bit of a dreamer. So the opening is of the book, he's actually wanting his mom to read a, a fairy tale that's very famous in the, in the country that I created called Locked in Land. And so He's, he believes in fairy tales. He believes in ever after. He believes in happily ever after. And so now he's stuck in his story without a happily ever after. And he's really, and there's kind of this backdrop of the country where the, the, the crown prince or princess has to be married. And love is not a, love is not a requirement. If you, you just got to be married. If you love them, great. If you don't, still get married. Because it's a matter of, and that was a lot of twisting and turning for me, why he would feel that pressure in 2021. Yeah. Right. And so what I decided was um, the royal family is a, is a stalwart part of their government. It's a part of their their traditions and who they are. It's their identity as a nation, just like Great Britain. You can be a Republican and say, and I don't really mean an American Republican. I mean, someone who doesn't want a monarchy Republican. If you can be one in the UK and the United Kingdom, all you want. But the queen and the British, fam the royal family really define your identity. I had a British coworker one time and he said, our queen is like your flag. So, yeah. and even though some people desecrate the flag and some people don't like the queen, it just means that there's a lot of identity. I would say more like our constitution. The queen is actually their constitution. So um, you may hear constitutional monarchy. It's not the same as us. They have things written down, but it does not work like we work at all. So I, I felt like um, that just kind of was another pressure for him. And so um, I found out that Prince Charles, while he's the crown prince, when he was 2021, 20, his mother actually swore him in as the prince, it's called an investiture ceremony. He actually swore him in as a prince and he agreed, I will be the future king of this country. I will serve and protect the people. He took an oath. And so I made for my characters that they took the oath the same time they got married. So it was like, he's in, you're in, let's just do it all at once. Right. Yeah. And so um, they didn't, oh no, I, mm, they were going to do it later on in the book, but for some reason he, he and Holland were about to do it. Yeah. So it's, you get married and then you're about to do it. Yeah, that's right. And then, you know, she dies. And so he hasn't done it because why he's not married. You have to be married to do it. Yeah. So, this is such an interesting way to kind of create this pressure that he pressure. has to get to, he, I mean, if he's going to survive or if the monarchy is going to survive, he has to get married. And there's a ticking time bomb that yes. makes it important. And I'm not going to say what that was. Yes. You had lots of good things happening where it was like, okay, there is this pressure. It has to happen. Um, and I, as I was reading, it, it was like, you've done this a couple of times now where I'm like, oh, really? Come on. That They have to get married so they can become the person and the future queen or whatever. And yet it's been real each time. And so Linda wants to know, have you found any more swan feathers? <laughs> I actually, oh, mine? No. And I think that was a synthetic feather, actually, because I was, still really I was cool. it was, it was really cool. I'm walking down the road, you guys. And I, I think I threw it away because it was kind of creeping me out, but I'm walking <laughs> down the road and I look down and there's this big swan, big, like a big swan feather. It's probably a party feather, yeah. but it was huge. And I took a picture of it. For everybody to see and i'm like look what i found <laughs> and what was so cool is the swan feather is one of the ways that heaven invades earth and in yes story in this story and so you know for those who haven't read it yet there's a swan dress and there's the story the fairy tale that it all starts with is all mm -hmm. about the swan feathers and it's kind of one of those symbols that often shows up in a rachel hawk book of, yeah where you could go okay the holy spirit god has just invaded today right. And so right. then for that to happen for you, I know. I, I really like. Oh, I really picked it up. Like, okay, God, I'm listening because this is my prayer walk. I walk every night at five. Although it's starting to be summer in Florida, so I probably will switch that up. But I was like, okay, I didn't feel anything in particular, but I thought it was kind of cool that I found this cool. big white feather the week. I think it was the week the book came out. Yeah, so. I think so. Yeah, yeah, which is just so fun. And yeah. Shirley says it's good to see two of her favorite authors together. Thank Hi, you. Shirley. <laughs> Thank you. We love being together. 
<laughs> we do. It's we have way too much fun when we get together. Mm -hmm. And so until we can like get in the same physical space again, this works. Yeah, this works well. great. Yes. So if you haven't read To Save a King yet, I highly, highly recommend it because it is just I, I wasn't sure I was going to like the fact that Holland dies. And you're right. I can say that because that is in the. Sure, you can copy. say that. Sure. I was like, what did you do? I was like, you couldn't be going here. And you did. And then, <laughs> but it's, it was really interesting to watch how the hero and the heroine's journeys really intertwined in a way that, you know, they're, they're mm. both dealing with similar things. You know, the identity, the, what can I believe for the future? What does appointment? Yeah, what could God have for me? I've given up my opportunity. My opportunity has passed me by. And I think there are just so many people who feel that way. Yeah. And so it's just, it's a really great book. And then it's got all the the fairy tale and the royalty and all that. And swans. I mean, you've and got swans. It. it's got swans. Yes. yes. And, and this, I, I tried to mirror the hand of God. It actually, was, I'd called that whole sequence with the hearts and the light different, something different. And I'm like, no, I have to have, I had the hand of God. Now we have the heart of God in this book. So that was just so kind of, next? I don't know. I wondered about the that. mind of God, the eyes of God. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. Elroy. I, don't know. The God I will you. say if anybody, for everybody who's read this book and liked it, and I have people saying what's next, I haven't even started it. So <laughs> sorry. Yeah. It was just. By the time I finished all the, this one was just up to the wire. When you're doing it yourself, you can do that. But yeah. by the time I finished the copy edits and the proofs and got it up and going, and then kind of, I had family and COVID, I had COVID, family, family, recover from COVID. And then I, then it was like, uh, some people came here for a, a get together. And then I'm like, bam, I'm in May. And now I'm trying to figure out, I got to let everybody know what's happening. How am I going to do that? So it just feels like, wow, just time just goes by so fast. And I haven't written word one of the next book. So. <laughs> and that's the, that is the challenge because you don't have those hard and fast deadlines from a publisher where you're like, because when you're working with them, it's this constant. There's multiple stories going at the same time. Well, and but, they're doing the things that I was doing. Yes. Like I turn the book over, I'm done. I'm, I'm off on something else. And then all the things that give you guys the word that the book is out, that's what I had to do. So yeah. I'm spending time trying to, to figure that out. And so it's interesting and other options dropped onto my table, which I'm like, okay, wow. Okay. What's happening here? So stay tuned. We don't know what's going to happen, but stay tuned. Be. Stay it's tuned. That's exactly it. Yeah. Same bat channel. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So um, several of us, Shirley finished it and loved it. Jean, Thank you. Jeannie, I love to see the king. Phyllis, I just got the book and so excited. Linda, I loved it. And it is, it's just, Phyllis, you're going to love it. It's right in line with what you, what you would expect with a Rachel Health book, especially a royalty one. And so it's so, so fun. Um, so Linda asked, Rachel, do you like indie publishing? Are you enjoying this journey for however long it is where you're doing the books on your own? It depends on what day you ask me. Serious. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if if you're stuck in the middle of a book and you're thinking, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, then you're like, who cares? It's you're doing it on your own. There's nobody expecting it from you except the readers who you love. And then that's like, that's even worse. Like I got to give something to the readers. I love those guys. And then, so from that standpoint, I do, but from the other standpoint of the time it takes and the effort that it takes and what, what occurred to me a couple of weekends ago was that I actually don't have a relationship with my publisher, meaning I have a relationship with me. I'm my own publisher, obviously. Mm -hmm. I don't have a relationship with Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple. I don't have a relationship with Ingram Spark. I don't have a relationship with anybody who's distributing this book. They're more like my, my distributors. And so because of that, there's, it doesn't feel like I'm in partnership with anybody. I'm like just working through the channels that they've provided. And I, that's a, that's something that I don't like. I like having the relationship, Kara and I, we were at the same publisher for many, many, many years. And so we, we know what they're like. We know that relationship that we can have with them. And, and so that part is a little hard. And then, you know, Kara and I were talking before the broadcast, it's just super hard to figure out Amazon ads. And I have taken classes from Amazon on how to do their ads. And it's just hit or miss. Even for Amazon, I've looked at the data, even for the Amazon's 
ads like here's Rachel Houck and here's how we're going to target her ads even theirs are hit or miss and so it's just at that point you're starting in to get into the money pool like what how much money do you spend and for me because I was traditionally published and because I had a way that I had developed writing a novel and and the processes that I went through for editing and proofing I kept those so I could deliver you what I thought was my top product then that cost me twice as much as most indie authors yeah. So I already am out the gate, you know, several thousands of dollars more and then to produce your own audio. And Louise Lee is reading again, you guys, she's so fabulous. The book will probably be out in June. I just gave her more time with the audio this time because she was having to do these American accents. And yeah. originally we originally we thought we, she was going to read Gemma's whole scene in an American accent. And she said it was a little difficult. So she gave me a sample where she did Gemma's Southern accent and she's not overdoing it, which most narrators overdo a Southern accent. She yeah. doesn't overdo it. And then she reads the prose in her accent. It's, it's awesome because it still feels like a fairy tale. So do you remember the opening of the live action Cinderella with Lily James in the big yeah. blue dress, right? The person who's doing the voiceover, she has that accent. That's what Louise sounds like to me. And so, so I'm thinking it'll, it'll still feel like a fairy tale because Louise is reading the prose in that same voice. And so I'm super excited for you guys to get it. I'm, uh, it's just fabulous. She makes the book so real to me. And I wasn't going to do audio because cha-ching, it's a chunk of change. It is a chunk. It's a huge it chunk of change. And she, we got it. We worked a little deal because I had multiple books. But the, the moment I heard her read, so I put it up for audition and all these different narrators read to try to get me to buy, yeah. buy their service, right? And some of them, their prices were just like, no, <laughs> can't yeah. afford you. And then I heard her read and that was all I could do for him to push the higher button. Like you're in, you're in. I, yeah. just, I had to run downstairs and talk to my husband real quick because I wanted to talk it through and look through the financial investment. It was, were, were we going to get yeah. an ROI on it and everything? But yeah, she's fab. Yes, well, I, I just her. actually listened to, to Love a Prince um, right before To Save a King came out because I was like, oh, let's see what the audiobook's like. Oh my gosh, she did an amazing job. I but know. it is, it's a process. It is, it's a process. people don't understand that, I mean, like the audiobook, there's two ways you can do it. So you can do it where you split the royalties or you can do it where you pay up front. And when I was doing my books, I was like, I'm going to pay up front because that seems like a more fair way, but it's riskier for me. And so mm -hmm. it's, it takes a lot, but then the time to listen to the audiobook, And I always am like, eh, I don't, you know, you buy the best person you can. And, but I'm like, I, I can't, because it's my words too. It's hard to get into it and be like, I either will get really nitpicky or I have to be kind of up here and go, yeah. okay, this is working. Um, I like the image and all that. So Joy's asking, do the narrators charge by the hour? And they do, they charge by the finished hour. So the finished production hour. The book hour. So the, yeah. the, whatever program you use, um, you tell them how big your book is and they calculate the production. So mm -hmm. how long is this book going to take to listen to? So my books take between 10 and 11 hours. And so that I pay the hourly rate for that, but you know, 10 and a half hours, that's my hourly rate, whatever she gets. And, yeah. And it's, so it's, it's hundreds it's of dollars, you guys, hundreds of dollars oh, an hour. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's insane. It's insane. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, if you can get the right person, there are people who just love audiobooks. And so, yeah. and I definitely, I've become someone who likes audiobooks, even though I still am like, give me the paper. I want the yeah. paper. Yeah. But there's a place for those. And then there are other people who are like, I, was actually speaking at a luncheon today and I had my books out and one lady was so sweet, but she's like, I quilt, I don't read. And I'm like, oh, but there mm. are audiobooks. And so, you know, you could listen to audiobooks while you're quilting. Absolutely. But, you know, I was like, and it's fine. Not everybody's a reader. That's totally fine. But she was just so cute. And she's like, I'm sorry. I just, I don't yeah. read. I'm like, that's great. I don't quilt. So <laughs> we're even. Um, but yeah, it, and the time it takes to pick someone, to put the book up for audition, to then listen as it's coming in, to get to approve the first chapter and go, yes, this is what I want, or no, this isn't quite right, or, and then to put it up. And then I moved mine to find away voices earlier okay. this spring so they could be more broadly distributed. And fortunately, the gals who narrated them 
did that for me because I was like, yeah. it'll take me a year. I, I, I know I can do it. I just don't have the time. Um, and so there's yeah. just, there's all those decisions that take away from the creating of the next book. Absolutely. And that's, you know, back to the original question about being indie, that's what you find yourself doing. You have to do all of that. So the producer though, is the narrator. And so for me, she had to, she's doing all the distribution. She's going to upload it to all the accounts. I found just staying on, I'm going to just stay on audible this time. I didn't find a wide distribution really netted that much. So I'm just going to stay on audible and believe it or not, I had a really good run out the door with the, to love a prince um, audio. So I feel like awesome. I haven't actually, part of me is, you know, the art artist of me. I'm like, yeah, I don't care about the hard numbers. Am I selling? Am I doing something? Okay, great. I don't, I'm like, but I did one time I just said, well, let me look at the hard numbers. This is about two months ago. So let me look at the hard numbers. Let me see where I'm at. Yeah. And that was a hard day. That was a hard yeah. day. <laughs> well, and that's where on the audiobooks, I still haven't netted out. I'm getting closer every month, but I had netted out. And, but I'm like, I have readers that that's what they want. And that's why for me getting into libraries through like find away voices and stuff. And I still need to do a better job marketing them, but I can already tell they're getting into libraries. You can get it on Hoopla. You can get it on these places where people like me look for audiobooks. And so it's an experiment. And that's no, kind of the I do think it's a good exp I do think it's a good experiment. And and that's one of the things like all my books are wide. I'm not in K I'm not in Kindle Unlimited. And because I feel like I want to make sure every reader out there who's ever bought a book of mine from someplace can get it. The only place you can't get it right now is in the bookstore. But I bet if you asked to get it from Ingram, they they would be able to get it. Yeah. So um, the I but you know that you take a little bit of a financial hit, believe it or not, to do that. Most of your money comes from Amazon, and for all of the things that people like to say about Amazon and complain about Amazon, and it is a behemoth. It also yeah. sells product. And it makes it easy. It just makes it easy. So, yeah. So that's a little of kind of that behind the scenes of what it's like, mm -hmm. because both Rachel and I have been traditionally published and like, I still want to be traditionally published, mm -hmm. but as we get our rights back and then like I'm doing, I'm writing two novellas this summer that are going into Christmas collections that oh, are cool. independent. Yeah. So that's fun. But you know, there's, it, as authors anymore, you almost have to operate in that in-between space where there yeah, you have to be hybrid. I think, yeah, I have a traditional idea right now that I'm trying to work, work on, uh, to get pitched out there. So it is, it's just, it's weird. It's, it's a weird space. It I, is weird space. I am glad that I did it. I'm super glad. I think I, I had to do it to see, you know, how you're looking over the fence and you're going, what's over there, what's over there. And yeah. I, I just was in a space in my, my, where my contracts were and, and where I was with writing and people were asking me, we write more Royals. And it seems so different from fifth Avenue story society, but are but those kinds of books. The characters in. I, but I, I pull the you. characters in. I do, but I try what, what, what people loved about fifth Avenue story society. I put all of those things into, I think the Royal books, yeah. they're not just kind of fluffy light romances. They're stories that actually I try to motivate everything and give, you know, like Kara was saying, oh no, he has to get married again. Yeah, so I tried to motivate it. Like, why do you have to? And really, to, to, I'll be honest, you guys, hold on to your hat. Writing about royals is boring because they, they don't really do anything, you know, and they, ha they kind of have this highbrow <laughs> life that nobody can look into other than what you read. You have to do a bunch yeah. of research. And I wasn't going to do a Harry and Meghan because that's just too real and too in our face. And, and I felt... I it would cause me to somehow make a judgment call. So I take real life scenarios and then I make them my own and flip them upside down. So I don't look like I'm actually pulling something off, off the newspaper headlines, but yeah, they do charity work and they don't have jobs and, but I can make my guys have jobs. So that's what you look forward to sometimes, but you know, they're really kind of just not, <laughs> there's just not much going on there. So you yeah. have to kind of, force them into things and so yeah well you do a good job with that and it's <laughs> fun in the comments we've got this um dialogue about audio versus paper and i think we all prefer paper but i have to agree with danielle that there are just times that an audiobook is great like that's how i've redeemed a lot of time in the car or yeah. if i'm working on something like i was actually listening to a thin man it's like the last one that dashiell hammett wrote while i was cooking today and it's just been oh wow because it started with a, here's the history of how he came up with the story. And then it's the nice. screenplay. 
basically. And yeah. so I love those movies. So I'm yeah, seeing- I was going to say John Wayne, man. <laughs> yeah. And so it's just, it's so fun. Um, but that's how I get a lot of my nonfiction. It's how I'll listen to a lot of the, you know, like New York Times bestseller ones and things like that. And Beth Vote is like, I love your Royal series. Hi, Beth. Yes. So got, yeah, just you've got a fan. Beth helps. Beth helps me. <laughs> Beth is amazing. And I'm really yes, hoping she she'll edit my two novellas, Beth. Yeah, summer. there you go. <laughs> Stay tuned. Save some room on your calendar. Yeah, but she's great about pushing pushing us to excellence, which is what she is. She editor. is. She's a great editor. She's a great editor. And so not everybody go and steal her because people like yeah. Rachel and I need her. So I know, anyway, right. we love you, Beth. Thank um, you, Beth. Oh, and Shirley's like, yeah, I drive 13 hours to my mother's home and audiobooks keep me going. We did a lot of that with our kids because I didn't want I didn't want them just on DVDs or on devices the whole time. And so we would listen to books together as we were driving and stuff. That's and smart. like, I hear you. I know you do. Um, okay. So the other thing we wanted to talk about because Jenny Snow left a really interesting question on the post for this uh, was... She's like, you're two of my favorite writers, but you're also really fit. How do you do that? Which I thought was just so interesting and a part of your journey. And we kind of come at it a little differently, but I think it's something a lot of women struggle with mm. is how do, wh what do we do? How do we handle our bodies and fitness and health? Um, and I also think because in a lot of ways, the pandemic is starting to lift. I'm not going to say it's over in the U.S., but it's definitely starting to lift that then we get an opportunity that we don't often get in life, kind of like a hard reset on what are we going to keep yeah. and what are we going to put back into our life and what are we going to say that, that didn't serve us well before, so we want to do something different now. And it's also we're heading into summer and better weather. So... What are your thoughts? I've got my thoughts, but that will start with yours. <laughs> start with me. Well, we were talking about this before we got going. Beth, uh, Beth uh, Kara and I have different um, approaches to this, but for me, I've always been exerciser. So I do spin class, weight lift. Um, I attempted aerobics once, but it's very funny. My The instructor was going, go left, go left. And I'm thinking, because we were like turned around, you know, and from she was to the back of us. And I'm thinking somebody's not doing it right. It was me. I was going right instead of left. This is weird. I don't know my right from my left half the time. But so I've always done that. I love to walk. I love to be outside. Mm -hmm. So I have always moved, so to speak. But you know, I wasn't managing what I ate well. And so I've lost weight on Weight Watchers before. And so when I came home from a trip in 2018, somebody had posted a picture on, on Facebook and I thought, no, 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 no. That's not how I look. So I printed it out. It was real grainy and straight. You know, it wasn't a good printout. Yeah. It was, it was um, ink stripes and everything. And I put it in front of my husband's face and I'm like, is this how I look? And he said, well, I mean, you're kind of leaning. No, I'm like, no, 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 I'm not leaning forward. It's not blousing out or anything. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, well, I mean, I don't yeah. think, and I'm like, I don't think I look like this in the, in the mirror, but this is, really. And so I joined Weight Watchers the next day. And my goal was I'm going to go to a, um, a workshop. And I had tried a workshop once before and I did it, you know, half baked. So I, it didn't work. So this was like, I'm in. And so I um, just said, that I'm going to make this meeting and, and I'm going to, my goal was also, my husband and I started having breakfast at a diner every couple mornings a week and we would read there. That's where I get my reading done. So my goal was to maintain that. I could change up my menu, but I wanted to maintain that. And so really, so for me, one, I think having a year of like having this really healthy breakfast was a, a great start for me. And then the, I had nothing that summer. We came home from vacation and up until ACFW's conference in the, and I think we were in San Antonio that year. No, we were, I can't remember where we were. Oh, no, we were in Dallas in the Gaylord. Okay. I, I was like, I'm focused on, I'm, I want to lose 20 pounds by ACFW. So I have three months. I'm going to focus on this. And you guys, I thought all I needed to lose was 20 pounds, but I lost 40. And I'm going to just, I'm going to focus on this. And it was, it was kind of like this grace period in my life. And, you know, I was telling Kara earlier that I had also spent like a year or more talking to God about it off and on. It wasn't an everyday 
but I would say like, God help me. And I would just repent of gluttony and not, no, I wasn't in the refrigerator or eating a pint of Haagen-Dazs. I wasn't going for midnight snacks. We don't have a lot of candy and ice cream in the house. It wasn't that it was more of when I was eating, I was eating too much or I was eating the wrong things. I love chips and, and sandwich person. Love those. Love, 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 love those. And I make this cake that's supposed to be light and good for you. And it's a regular cake mix, but you use applesauce instead of oil and egg whites instead of the whole yolk. And I could eat the whole thing. I could just eat the whole thing. It's so good. And you don't, it doesn't fill you up. So I didn't do that often at all, but you know, those are the kinds of things that I had to, or people over for dinner. Oh, I'll make a lasagna and oh, we'll have brownies and ice cream, which I, I love brownies and ice cream. We'll have that for dessert, you know, and you have seconds. And so, oh, I love bread with it, with some garlic salt. And the next thing I know, you know, this, you're just over, I was eating too much, even though I moved a lot. And so I, I was post-menopause, so you can lose weight post-menopause. Anybody out there, you can lose weight. My mom lost 30 pounds and she was 81 years old. So that's awesome. Th so that was for me. And then I was able to start running. I wasn't able to, I, I, I hurt my knees hurt. My knees don't hurt anymore. I was able to start running and I kept, uh, I took off, I took a year off of weightlifting just to get to my goal weight. And then I went back to weightlifting. So that's, and you know, I was telling Kara this too. My foot is always on the clutch of what I eat. I mean, I would love, you know, every night to come when I feel like, Hey, let's just do pizza. I can't do it. I have to say no to pizza because that's just, I have to watch it. I have to ride that clutch. And so I think that's the thing I learned this journey. I mean, this, was, it'll be three years that I started in this June and I'm two years with it off. Yeah. Which is great. It was fun yeah. to watch that discipline. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's really like for me, um, I never got heavy, but it was always just really being focused on at a certain level, this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And right. so I always want to be ready. Um, I also work with college students. And so, and I've got four kids that, you know, that I'm kind of always busy with. And it was just, it was a, for me, it's stress management. Movement and taking care of my body is really important for me to be able to do the things I need. And so for me, it's actually been learning that rest is important. Yeah. And rest that is important. Yeah. rest is something that I need to do because I could, I had years where I operated on five hours of sleep because I just had so much going on. And then about probably seven years ago, one of my friends um, has a fat loss lifestyle thing that she does, but I had three kids who are athletic and I was like, I want to make sure I know enough about nutrition to train my kids well so that when they leave they're, they don't even have to think about it. They've got good, healthy habits. Habits, and, yeah. And so, and I also was like, and at some point I'm going to hit menopause and I want to have the tools I need now so it doesn't become an issue then. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm 47 and I'm still basically the same weight I've been, but I also know my body really well. And so like this summer, I'm like, I need to get back into weights. I do a lot of walking. So my, the Fitbit my husband, yeah. when I first got one, was like, okay, now you know, you control the device, the device doesn't control you. But <laughs> he knows you so well. He, does. he knows me <laughs> so well. But instead of 10,000 steps, it's 11,000. And there are a lot of days it's much higher than that. But I love that if I haven't moved because I'm like sitting at my desk, it'll alert me. And I get up in, in the morning when I get to campus, I do a prayer walk for 15 minutes in the morning. It's my transition between mom to professor. And then That's good. I over lunch, you know, just going, it is good. It is healthy. I'm actually more productive if I take that 15 minute break and I go for a walk or just being intentional about what I eat. Cause mine is, I actually cannot eat. I can go and not fuel my body well at all. And mm. so it's been actually learning, no, this is what my body needs. And I still don't like protein. I still need to up that, but I now know. So then there's some accountability, but that just kind of daily discipline. So it doesn't become this massive issue. And that's, right. that's been kind of my focus is how do I stay disciplined? Because when I'm 60 or when I'm 70 and God's like, I want you to go here and do something. I want to be able to go, yeah, God, I'm ready. My body's ready. Let's go. Versus, you know, I would have loved to do that, but yeah, I have too many eggs and for this or whatever. Yeah. So we take care of we take care of my mother-in-law. Well, we help take care of her. My sister-in-law takes care of her. 
And yeah, I've, I've seen what 94 looks like up close. I saw it with my grandmother. She died 102 in seven months. So um, she was completely stooped over. So I'm, I do weights. I've, I've loved weightlifting. I've always loved weightlifting. I've lifted since college and I'm actually starting to get muscle, you know? So like, that's another thing when I start seeing, like if, when I, when I'm lifting and I see, I see them say muscle build on me that the guys have, I'm like, hmm. So, (laughs) so I, you know, and I always thought I could never change my leg shape and I did a different exercise and I'm actually changing the shape of my legs. You know, like I said, I'm running, um, that I, that I wasn't able to do before. And I want to say this, um, Kara functions in her personality. I think weight wouldn't dare to try to keep up with her. Like, <laughs> she's just going to beat you off with her busyness and yeah. her activity for, you know, so, but I had to function in mine. And Absolutely. so you have to, fun- now you can lose weight people without exercise. It's just better for your overall health that you do move. And there's the other thing you can't exercise off bad eating habits. I yes. was, I was proof of that. I was exercising. I was moving for the most part but I couldn't, you can't have a hamburger every day or hamburger, pizza, brownies and ice cream. And here's, here's the thing that I say to people that I support who want to be in Weight Watchers. I say, you have to track. So for me, I track what I've eaten because that helps me know where I'm at because it shows me my weekly points and my daily points. And if my daily point, my weekly points are getting down there, that means I've eaten beyond my daily points too often. And that's where you're going to start seeing those, you know, those pounds come back on. So you can't move off bad eating habits. And so, so if you have to start tracking what you eat, because today, tomorrow, I am not going to remember what I ate today. You know, it's just so classic. Like, why are you asking me that? I can't even remember what I had for lunch yesterday. That's so true. And so if you're struggling and some people don't like to write things down, find an app. There's so many great apps. If you don't want to join Weight Watchers or whatever, there's so many great apps that help you track what you're doing. And I just really, you just write it down on a quick piece of paper. That's so you know, if you're, if that's a, that's just a good tip. And so then you can get a good assessment and then go to the Lord and say, okay, what, what do I do with this? How do I do with this? I'm not an extremist. I don't believe in cutting out anything. Um, keto almost, I, my body did not, my body said, what are we doing? Get off this keto thing. So, but I know it works really well for people, really well for people. But if you're like, I just want to have something where I can go to a party and have a, you know, a bite of cake. That's what I do. I'll do a bite of cake. My husband comes by here, here's the cake. Here's your fork. You know, he knows I'm going to get a bite of cake. Um, and sometimes yeah. I have cake. Sometimes I have cake. And that's what's so, that's, what's beautiful about it. You can eat anything if you're just mindful of what you eat. I could talk about this all day long. So, <laughs> well, and, I think, and that's one of the reasons I thought this was actually worth us talking about is because we're different. And it's just like mm-hmm. with writing, if we were going to talk about writing, how we write is different, totally different. And that's important. So for me, I actually have to make sure I'm eating and I'm eating Mm -hmm. the right things. And for me, discipline is the movement. So for me, that looks like, you know, my Fitbit and I had a hundred and some days of, I was on it, but then I got COVID and I gave myself grace that I had two days that I didn't go do my walking. I was like, oh, well, um, but it's, it's balance and it's knowing, you know, being sensitive to the Holy spirit on what do I need to do? Where do I need to be accountable? Um, and then it's, I also think it's just really important to be like, okay, God, this is a temple. I want to respect it, but I also want to love it. And because it's something you created and that's something that I know I've had to grow in because I can still look at myself and go, oh, here's all the things that are wrong. And I've gone, you know what? But at 47, I basically look like I did at 20, 25. So that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be. That's unusual too. Yeah. And (laughs) that's awesome. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Yeah. Yeah. I would say that just be grateful to the Lord. So it's a part of that whole praying and saying, Lord, obviously I, I have gluttonous tendencies because I'm overweight, but I also said, but if this is who I am, then this is who I am. I'll be content. So I almost, it's, it's, it's a weird paradox that I almost had to be content with being 40 pounds overweight and, but also saying, God, can you help me? You can take all these things to the Lord. He wants to have a dialogue with you about all these various aspects of your life, your eating, your exercise, 
you know, and don't feel condemnation that you're not exercising like someone else. Exactly. If you, if you feel like you need to exercise, find something that works for you. And all of these things, I mean, everything needs, we can take everything to him, everything to him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, believe it or not, we've already gone over time, which I knew we would because we just have such we do have fun. I'm not, yeah. I told you, I talk about this forever. Oh, and buy my book, right? Buy, yeah. buy my book. Exactly. And if, for those of you who haven't read it yet, it really is fantastic. I loved To Save the King. I think I probably read it in like two days because it was just such a good quick read, but with the depth that I've come to love and the challenge um, in such, in the best sense of the word, word when I read a Rachel Health book. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having tonight. me. And yeah, if you're like, this was fun. Thank you so much. Um, Thanks, everyone. So, yeah, and next week is Lynn Austin. So be sure to check back. Oh, for that'll be fun. Yeah, I can't wait. Uh, oh, and she wants, Linda wants to know what your pillow says. I think it says, I saw it before. Too uh, many, so many books, too little time. Yeah, <laughs> which is perfect for readers and writers. All right. Well, thanks so much. And I hope to see some of you again next week on Tuesday. And thanks again for joining us tonight. Bye, everyone. Okay. So the live video has ended. I know. It's